Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. It's a glorious Tuesday. Did you enjoy your Monday? Did you enjoy my bad transitions yesterday? Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is Display. Look at these dope, gorgeous metal prints. Oh, you could hang them on your wall. They mount with magnets, easy peasy. Oh, you wanna swap one into another room? You should just ah, rip it off the wall, slap it on with magnets. Super dope. They plant 10 trees for every display you buy. And if you use the link in the video description and enter coupon code UFD, you'll save 15% off your order. 15%? That's more than 5%. It's great. It's a great deal. It's free real estate on your wall. Anyways, check it out. Link below. Let's talk about hot news. We got stuff. Intel. Intel's, uh, there's some information being found out about their upcoming Project Z graphics cards, or also known as Generation 12 graphics cards. They're currently, we're technically on Gen 11. That's gonna be shipping with the Ice Lake 10 nanometer Sunny Cove setup. So that's gonna be good, and that's supposed to have one teraflop. But now there's information regarding the Gen 2, both low power and high power designations of different discrete graphics cards. You can see the listing that's on the screen right now. And it looks like potentially we also have an indication of how many compute units or rather execution units each of the Intel cards is going to have all the way up to 512 execution units. What that means in terms of performance is not yet known, but there is at least clarification of at least four different cards from Intel. And remember, they said that they're gonna be launching in 2020 which is four months away. Four months. We are four months away from an Intel potential product launch, possibly at CES. That's crazy. You thought Nvidia and AMD was the big battle. No, Intel coming in, laying the smack down with their Project Z GPUs. It's gonna get cray cray. 512 cores, we'll see what that can do in the future. But do you like coffee? Do you like Coffee Lake? Do you like coffee like in a coffee machine? Well, this dude on Reddit did, Mr. Lackadaisical65. He built an entire Coffee Lake Plus 1080 Mini system into a Mr. Coffee Cappuccino machine. It's also water cooled. This is the best thing I've seen. It's amazing. This is, in case you didn't know, we at UFD Tech actually made one or two videos where we made coffee with Coffee Lake and try to make CPU coffee. So you can check those out, but also check out the link in the video description on, of this Reddit post of this dude's coffee, Mr. Coffee PC build. It's amazing, it's coffee like. But you know what else requires fast caffeine? Your Ryzen system, which needs fast RAM. Anyways, the DRAM calculator that people typically use for AMD processors has now been updated for full Ryzen 3000 and X570 support. So in case you're trying to get the juice out of your Ryzen RAM, just use the calculator. I always calculate juice. Speaking of the juice, bad juice, expired juice. That was uh, AMD's launch with Ryzen 3000 when it concerned Destiny 2 players because there was just no support for it whatsoever. However, they announced that they're releasing a beta chipset driver, which should hopefully fix the issue of Destiny 2, which, I mean, again, as I've mentioned several times, nobody gives a crap about that game. It's not one of the most popular games in the world right now. They're not trying to get it for free everywhere so it gets in the hands of more player, and it's not a big deal that Bungie left Activision is actually implementing their vision for the game and it's gotten significantly better over the past few months. None of that matters. Nobody should play it. You're right. Reese is on my side. You're not. You shut your mouth. And then another cool video by Der Bauer. He actually did a test where he tried to see if he could run Ryzen 3000 without a cooler. And it actually did surprisingly well, running at 2.8 gigahertz for several minutes. However, at the end of the video, he concluded that it's worse than Intel for running without a cooler. You wanna check that out. Check that link right up there. You totally should watch that video, it's dope. And then, let's talk about AMD stuff yet again. I'm just on an AMD roll. It's a damned roll, it's new bread. Anyways, there's been reports coming out of Japan regarding PC sales, at least when it comes to solo CPU sales, AMD is taking a 69% advantage over Intel's 31%. Pathetic Intel, you lost the lead, it's disgusting. However, Intel is technically shipping more chips because they're in built pre-built and OEMs and all that kind of stuff, but AMD is selling direct to the consumer more often than not when it comes to Japan. Get wrecked. And also AMD, more AMD stuff. How much AMD news do I have? I don't know. Anyways, apparently 
AMD is saying that you should disregard Steam's hardware survey because of a bug that is not really reporting things properly, which is limited to, but not including every single time somebody logs into a machine at an internet cafe that counts as one system. So especially when you take into concern Chinese, China's internet cafe market, when like they unleash 1060s on the world and there was millions of them out there. Well, apparently if you just keep logging in, you get new identification. So like it's overpopulating on a bunch of different hardware specs that are in internet cafes. That doesn't necessarily mean anything's better for AMD. It just means that there's a lot of fake numbers out there. Don't trust fake numbers, especially when it comes to user benchmark. Oh, yes, we're bringing this back up because they've actually responded to all of the controversy about their crap. And I mean, at one point they said that uh, everybody was an organized army of shills when it came to complaining about their new system. And Hardware Unbox actually did a decent video, which you can check out right there, discussing the user benchmark data. But essentially it boils down to their benchmarks of the chips, totally fine. Everything's good there. Their weighted ranking system is bollocks and should be exploded. It doesn't make any sense. It's still really weird that even when you're comparing Intel to Intel, the 9350KF is ranked 50th and then the 9980XE 18 core 36 thread is ranked 58th. That doesn't make any sense. They're not weighting things correctly. Just get rid of it. Just have it sort by the scores in single core, multi core, quad core, octa core. Like have it sort that way instead of weighting the rankings and making it all stupid. You're wrong, user benchmark, and I'm a shill. Ba -ba. And NVIDIA finally did something good for the consumer and that they should have done a long time ago. And that is they have updated their studio creator drivers to include 10-bit editing support on RTX cards. That was previously only available on their Quadro cards, but now it's available to any RTX owner. So if you've been trying to edit 10-bit in let's say Adobe Premiere, and you couldn't do it before because you didn't have a Quadro card, well, NVIDIA was finally just like, oh, hey, let's just flick this button and now you can have it. They should have done this a long time ago. Why didn't you have this on launch? I don't know. Then it was blah, blah, blah. Jerks, but thank you for doing it now. Best time to do it was years ago. The second best time is now. And then do you like to see things close up? I said, do you like to see things close up? Well, scientists have created a contact lens that can now zoom, a zoomable contact lens that zooms on command. You blink twice and there it is thing is closer up. Oh man, this is a bad future we're living in. Built-in binoculars, man, that's gonna make it so easy to bird watch. Da, da, da. Imagine you got something in your eyes and you're like blinking fast to like get it out. This <laughs> is something in and out. Ah, oh, my eyeball. I don't have that problem. I don't have to close my eyes. And in fact, I'm not gonna close my eyes for the rest of this episode, besides when I blink just there. So let's talk about Capital One, the breach that it was, gosh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it while I'm talking. I can win any staring contest, but it's hard to talk, man. There's a Capital One breach that's affecting over a hundred million people. It appears that the majority of them, uh, at least the people who had the biggest amount of information stolen is going to be happening in Canada as far as unencrypted data. However, when it comes to encrypted data, over a hundred million users are affected. Yikes, yikes. Just, let's just keep hacking things, friends. Apparently, it was a former Amazon employee who did it, and he's already been arrested. So that's good, but that doesn't mean he didn't sell the data. And then in case you were caught in the Equifax breach that happened a little while ago, they are now finally giving out the payment settlements for that. You can claim at least $125 if you have been found to be involved in the Equifax scandal. And then I think it's like several thousand dollars if it's found out that your identity was actually stolen from this breach, but you would have to actually file a whole bunch. It's, it's a lot of red tape. And then you can also sign up for Equifax's data protection, which I mean, they're the people who lost it in the first place. So why would you, why? It doesn't make any, why would you, and then, do you hate bezels? I don't, I really don't, but Oppo has come out in war of bezels with their new waterfall display, which has a wraparound screen on the edge, which makes things look terrible because the, the apps kind of fall off this. It's bad, I don't like it, I don't like it. And then Pixel 4, Google confirmed yesterday that they will indeed be including a time of flight sensor so that you can use hand gestures properly, not in some sort of gimmicky way. Although technically it's still a gimmick, but they're gonna have dedicated hardware for it. So it's technically half a gimmick. That's the type of gimmicks I love. And then do you remember 
the service Ultraviolet, which had digital storage of your favorite films. You would buy a physical copy, then it would come with an ultraviolet code. Let's say your dog ate your Blu-ray. Well, then you still had a high quality backup in the cloud. Well, it's getting shut down. They announced this at the beginning of the year. It ends tomorrow. And it's just a further bit of evidence that we no longer own anything and we're leasing everything in our entire lives and you have no physical rights to nothing, including, but not limited to, the end of this episode of Hot News, or this entire episode of Hot News. This is mine, not yours. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna be done. And you're gonna check out Displate. Dope metal prints, check them out. This Goku is our best seller, because it's so freaking gorgeous, like the Goku. Go to the link in the video description, use coupon code UFD, save 15%. It's amazing, get it. They plant trees as well, come on. Anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of our news. I'm Brett with the Hot News Channel. Thank you so much for watching. You've just been filled in. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next one. Bye.